Hello, in this video we'll talk about the transient response of capacitors in DC circuits. So we basically have two cases. One is when the capacitor is charging. So when we have a capacitor that is charging, uh, the equation we use for the voltage between its terminals is this one. It's going to be a constant K1 times e to the minus t over tau. Uh, we're assuming here that the initial value is zero. So at time t equals zero, the, the capacitor is fully discharged. So for more details about this equation, you guys can check the, the lecture notes. Uh, K1 is the value of the steady state voltage between the terminals of C. Uh, and it's, it's uh, the voltage we get when the capacitor it's, uh, is fully charged and it's reached a steady state condition. And the value of tau is just a time constant and we find it by multiplying r times c. So when c is charging, this is the equation we use, we basically need to find two values, tau, the time constant, and um, k1. And when t is equal to zero, the whole thing is equal to zero, so the, if we want to plot this equation, t equals zero, the exponential is one, one minus one is zero, uh, so we get k1. And when t goes to infinity, uh, the exponential is zero, so the final value is, is k1. So the, the voltage between the terminals of c starts at zero, it's, it is charging, it is gonna reach a final value of k1 when it is in a steady state. The other condition is when the capacitor is discharging. So for this case, the equation is a bit different because now we're assuming that the capacitor is going to fully discharge. If that's the case, then we have the equation is going to be a constant K2 times the exponential to the to minus T over tau. And uh, we're assuming here that for a sufficiently large T, the capacitor is going to be fully discharged. So the voltage is going to be zero. The constant K2 is now the initial value of the voltage between the terminals of C. So we usually assume that the capacitor is already in steady state conditions. And that voltage, uh, the voltage between the terminals of C before it starts um, discharging, that's the value of K2 we're looking for. So that's the initial value of VC. And tau is the time constant. And we, again, we calculate it by multiplying R times C. Now this R here is the resistance the capacitor is charging through, and this R is the resistance the capacitor is discharging through. If we want to plot this equation, uh, when we have t equal to zero, the exponential is one. So when t is equal to zero, the value of the voltage is K2. That's the initial value. Uh, but when t goes to infinity, the exponential goes to zero, uh, so the whole expression is going to go to zero. At the end, the final value is going to be zero when the capacitor is fully discharged. So the behavior is like this. Okay, so we have when the capacitor is charging, that's the equation we use. Um, and uh, when the capacitor is discharging, that's the other equation we have to use. So we basically need two, two things, one constant K1 in tau when it is charging and the constant K2 in tau when it is discharging. Okay, so let's see now the easiest example for this type of problems. When let's consider uh, we have let's consider we have a voltage source V in series with a resistance, and we're going to connect the capacitor here. We put a switch here. And we're going to close this switch at t equals zero. Here we have r. So for any time t less than zero, the capacitor is disconnected, the switch is open, and at t equals zero, we close the switch. So we are assuming here that the capacitor is fully discharged because it was disconnected for t less than zero. And when we, when we close the switch, it starts charging. Since it is charging, this is the equation we have to use. Uh, to describe the uh, behavior of the voltage. So we have K1 times 1 minus e to the minus t over tau. 
Now we have to find K1 and we have to find tau. To find K1, K1 is the steady state value of the voltage Vc. So what happens when the capacitor is fully charged and it reaches a steady state? Well, it basically behaves like an open circuit. So that's what we have, that's what we have to do now. We have to take the circuit, assume that the capacitor has already uh, reached steady state, and replace it with an open circuit and just find the voltage there. And that's the, the constant K1 we're looking for. In this case it's very simple because we have an open circuit, there's no current flow in here, so there's no voltage drop across R, so the same voltage from the source is the same voltage of VC. So that is V, K1 is V. And to find tau, in this case it's very simple because all the current flowing from the source that is charging the capacitor when we close the switch is flowing through R. So R is the resistance the capacitor is charging through. So to find tau, we just multiply R times C. And the final, uh, uh, the complete expression for the voltage is going to be K1, that is V, times 1 minus E to the minus T over tau, and tau is RC, and that is the expression. If we want to plot this, we're going to have T here and the voltage there. The initial value is zero, capacitor is fully discharged, final value is V. Now let's consider a more complicated um, circuit. Uh, let's say we have uh, two sources there. We close the switch at t equals zero, so the capacitor starts charging at t equals zero. Uh, we're going to have a current flowing there that is charging the capacitor, and we want to find the voltage when the capacitor is charging. The capacitor is charging. We know now the equation we have to use is k1 1 minus e to the minus t over tau and we have to find K1 and we have to find tau. To find K1, the procedure is exactly the same as before. We have to assume the capacitor has already reached um, steady state, so we replace it with an open circuit and find the voltage between its terminals. So we have two ohms here, two volts there, two ohms here, one volt source, now we replace the capacitor with an open circuit there and we need to find this voltage. That voltage is K1, uh, the constant we're looking for. We basically have this one loop, so we can... To find the voltage VC, we have to consider the, the voltage from the source and the voltage between the terminals of 2 ohms, so we're going to find the current first. We have to find the current in order to find the value of the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor. We're going to use KVL equation here. So we have 2 volts minus the drop across 2 minus the drop across the other 2 resistor. And now we have to consider the voltage of the source. Now this source, the 1 volt source, has a different polarity with respect to the 2 volt source. So that's why I have to write here the minus 1 and the whole thing has to be equal to 0 because both sources they have uh, different polarity, one, one voltage has to be negative. So from here we get the current is going to be 0.25 amps, that's the current flowing through the 2 ohm resistor connected to the 1 volt source. So to find K1, we have to find the voltage between that point and that point there, because that's the voltage VC. So what we do is we consider the 1 volt source, the polarity is from minus to plus. So we write 1 volt, and now we have to consider the voltage across 2. The current is going downwards, it's flowing downwards there, so it's entering this terminal, it's leaving the other one. So as you can see here, uh, here we're going from minus to plus, we've got 1 volt. But uh, the voltage across 2 is also going from minus to plus. That's why you have to write the plus in the equation. They both have the same polarity, so we need to add them up. 1 volt plus the drop across 2 ohms, and we get 1.5 volts.
and that's the value of k1. Now to find tau, the situation is a little bit different here because we have many resistors and, and many sources. So what's the value of r that we use? We have here resistors, we have sources. So the way we do it is we have to find r thevenin. The resistance we're looking for here to find tau is r thevenin. But we have to find R7 in now considering the capacitor as the load of the circuit. So we have to remember all the procedure uh, we used to follow to find R7 in. We have to replace voltage sources with short circuits and current sources with open circuits. And then find the um, equivalent resistance between the terminals of the load. In this case the load is the capacitor. So we have here two ohms and then we have to replace the, the two voltage sources with short circuits. So we have put the short circuit there, we have two ohm resistor, we have to put another short circuit there and here we have the two terminals of the capacitor and we have to find R7 with respect to those two points because that's the load now, the capacitor. In this case it's very simple, we just have 2 ohms in parallel with 2 ohms and we get 1 ohm. That's the Thevenin's equivalent resistance. So we're gonna use the um, that resistance to find tau. 1 ohm times the capacitance, in this case is 10 micro, 10 microseconds. The units of tau are seconds. So now we have K1 and we have tau, so we basically have the, the complete expression for the voltage. 1.5, that was the value of K1 we got before. 1 minus e to the minus t over tau, that's 10 micro, and that's the expression of the voltage. If we want to plot this, the um, final value is going to be 1.5. It starts at 0 then capacitor starts charging and we get 1.5 volts at the end. That's the steady state value of the voltage. Now uh, let's consider the other case when the capacitor is discharging. So let's consider this this uh, this circuit. Let's assume that for t less than zero, let's assume that for t less than zero the capacitor is, is in steady state. So it's already charged. Uh, the, uh, the switch is in position 1, so uh, the source is connected to, to the capacitor. But then, at t equals 0, we move the switch to position 2, we basically disconnect the, the 12 volt source, and c is discharging. And we're going to see this um, in more detail. So we want to find the voltage uh, Vc for any time t greater than zero when the capacitor is discharging. So the capacitor is discharging, we know now that the equation we have to use is k2 e to the minus t over tau, so we have to find k2 and tau, and k2 was the initial value of the voltage. That's the initial value of uh, the voltage between the terminals of C. In this case, we are assuming that the capacitor is already in a steady state. So the voltage we're looking for is the steady state value of the voltage before the capacitor um, started discharging. So for T less than zero. That's going to give us the initial value. And after that, we're going to find tau. So how do we find K1? To find K1, we have to look at the past. And and determine what was the value, the steady state value of the voltage before we move the switch to position 2. So we're going to draw the circuit for time t less than 0 and for time t less than 0 the switch is in position 1. So this is the circuit we get. We already know the capacitor was in a steady state so we can replace it with an open circuit and find the value of the voltage between its terminals and that's the, the constant K2 we're looking for. Because we know the capacitor is in a steady state, that's why we can replace the capacitor with an open circuit for any time t less than zero. We have just one loop in the circuit, 
So to find K2, that's the voltage between the terminals of C, that voltage is the same voltage across the 3K ohm resistor. So we basically need to find the voltage across that resistor. Like that. So we have just one loop. We can find the current. There's going to be the voltage, 12 volts, divided by the total resistance. In this case, they're, they're in series. We have 9K there. And to find uh, the voltage between uh, the terminals of the 3K ohm resistor, we just multiply by 3K and we get 4 volts. That's the voltage across the resistor, that's the same voltage across the terminals of the capacitor. And that's the initial value of the voltage, that's the value of the uh, voltage between the terminals of C when it is in a steady state, for T less than 0. Now to find tau, we have to consider now the circuit when the capacitor is discharging. And that happens when we move the switch to position 2. So the capacitor is discharging for T greater than 0, and that happens when we move the switch to position 2. So we basically now disconnect the source, right? We're going to have a connection here. We disconnect the source because we're moving the switch to position 2. And the capacitor is going to discharge through the 3K and through the 6K ohm resistor. So what we have here now is a circuit like this. We have the capacitor and it's going to discharge through the 6K ohm resistor and through the 3K ohm resistor. We can simplify this circuit because we don't have any source here, we just have the capacitor and, and resistors. So we can find an equivalent resistance. And in this case it's very simple, it's just 3K in parallel with 2K. Oh, sorry, 6K in parallel with 3K, and we're going to get 2K. So from the point of view of the capacitor, it doesn't know if it is discharging itself, itself through the equivalent resistance or through two resistances in, in parallel. So that's the resistance we use to find tau, the equivalent resistance. Multiply by the capacitance, 2K times 100 micro and we get 0.2 seconds. So we have K2 and we have tau, so we can write the, the complete expression for the voltage. VC so of T is going to be 4 times e to the minus T over 0.2. And if we want to plot this, the initial value of the voltage is going to be 4 volts. That's exactly the moment when we switch, we move the switch to position 2 and it starts discharging. So the voltage is going to go to zero exponentially like that.